Hello and welcome to Capitol Hill. I'm Lyndall Curtis. There was another sign of some weakness in the Australian economy with the February unemployment figures going up a tick. The unemployment figures were driven partly by a fall in part-time employment. There are also fewer people looking for jobs. Today the opposition is calling for the Defence Minister Stephen Smith to apologise for his suggestions last year that the ADFA Commandant had erred in going ahead with unrelated disciplinary proceedings against the female officer cadet at the centre of the so-called Skype sex allegations. Joining me to discuss the day's events are Liberal MP Alan Tudge and Labor MP Shane Newman. Welcome to you both. Hi, Lyndall. G'day, Shane. Hello. Hello, Alan. First, we'll go to reaction to today's unemployment figures from the Employment Minister, Bill Shorten. Despite the GFC uh, and the aftermath, despite the problems in Europe which are underway at the moment, despite the impact of the high dollar, uh, we're seeing that unemployment, whilst it's potentially going to go up in the course of the year, hasn't increased as greatly as I think people first feared. After the federal government crowed about the unemployment figures last month saying more Australians are in jobs than ever before, 15,000 Australians nationally lost their jobs in the last month. This just shows that you can't believe what the government says. Shane, is the worry for the government not only that unemployment went up slightly from 5.1 to 5.2 per cent, but that jobs growth is basically flat? Well, jobs growth is a big issue in this country and we have stimulated the economy and there are 700,000 people in jobs as a result of the decisive and early action this government has undertaken. And we have got about $3 billion in jobs programs. We're seeing uh, strong growth in certain sectors. But as the uh, Treasurer and as Bill Shorten has made the point on numerous occasions, this is a patchwork economy. Every person who loses a job, it's a tragedy for that person and for their family. And that's why this government, this Federal Labor government, is taking strong steps to do it. And you've got to look at the unemployment rate. 5.2 per cent compares very favourably with the Americans who would be uh, crowing and celebrating at a 5.2 per cent. Their unemployment rate's well over 8 per cent. We're seeing about 9 per cent across the OECD and in Europe. So 5.2 per cent, it's too many people unemployed, but still we are in a strong position as we go forward in terms of our economic growth and prosperity. Alan, uh, Shane's basically right, isn't it? The, the unemployment rate in Australia is much better than for some other developed economies. And, and also the, the government uh, foreshadowed this. The, the MAIFO forecasts were for unemployment to rise to about 5.5%. Yeah, thanks, Lyndall. I think that that's cold comfort, though, to the 15,400 people who lost their job over the last month. And the concern is that we're going to have many thousands of more people lose their job in the, in the months um, ahead. Now, of course, some international factors are at play here, which we don't have control over. But there are many things that's, that the government does have control over. And my critique, really, is that the government is making things worse in many instances rather than making them better. For example, they're, they're one of the very few governments that, that has re-regulated the labour market. They're one of the very few governments that has introduced a myriad of new regulations on the business community. And of course, the, what we do have coming is the carbon tax come the 1st of July, which is, which is forecast, according to the New South Wales Treasury, to cost 34,000 jobs in New South Wales alone. So that's my critique of the government, is that Whereas it should be doing everything it can to create jobs, it's actually putting barriers in place and making it, and making it harder for businesses um, to employ more people. Uh, jo jobs fell, the job numbers, un oh, sorry, unemployment rose in, in both of your states. Alan, your state isn't, isn't one where there is a big mining industry. What do you put the rise in unemployment in Victoria down to? Well, th there's just a general lack of confidence um, in the in the economy here in Victoria, um, you also see that in in South Australia, where they've announced that there's a recession now, as well as in Tasmania and some other some other states. Now, the high Aussie dollar doesn't help when when we've got a big manufacturing sector here in in Victoria. But if if I go back to that central point, I mean. Uh, from a policy perspective, we need to be doing everything we possibly can to make the business environment as attractive as possible so it's easy for businesses to employ people and they want to employ people. And as I said, particularly we've got to get rid of this carbon tax, which is creating enormous uncertainty and really sapping people, um, sapping businesses of confidence. 
Shane, unemployment rose in Queensland as well. Is that a, a hangover from the natural disasters of last year or a sign that, that while the mining industry creates a lot of investment, it doesn't necessarily create a lot of jobs? We are particularly vulnerable in Queensland to international factors, particularly in the mining sector and the agricultural sector. We are still dealing with the aftermath of the flood and we are investing. I mean, we have invested $5.8 billion in flood recovery and the kind of financial support that we needed to do that was opposed by those opposite. Uh, with respect to the carbon tax, the situation is that Treasury figures clearly show strong economic growth, strong employment growth, and if we adopted the policy of the Coalition, we'd be looking at an unemployment rate of a 7 in front of it. And that's the policy of the Coalition. That's exactly what, the, that's exactly what they, they think. They wanted to follow the New Zealand model and elsewhere. They oppose the stimulus package. They oppose the nation building fundings. Look, I've just driven on a road that uh, the Coalition has opposed the funding for. It's employed up to 10,000 Queenslanders involved in this project. It's the Ipswich motorway between Ipswich and Brisbane. The Coalition opposed it for three elections in a row, that funding. So there's an example of the Coalition saying one thing in Canberra. And in fact, the consequences of following their policy would be disaster for our economy and disaster for unemployment. If I could Is put a question... One of the key differences so... between, between Labor and the Coalition There's People like Shane believe that the government is the body that creates the jobs, that only the governments can, can create the jobs, when, when we know that it's actually businesses that create the jobs. And you have to make the business environment attractive because it's the 2.2 million small businesses and the, all of the larger businesses which are ultimately the, large, the largest employers out there. And at the moment there's no confidence for the, for the business sector. And in part because the carbon tax is coming, but also because of the industrial relations regime. I mean, Today the figures also show that we've got twice as many days lost due to industrial disputes um, uh, this year compared to 12 months ago. Um, I, so we've got all of these factors well, which are well, at play. Could, it, could well, I just talk, ask... We're talking I just about, ask... Linda, we're talking about the situation with, you know, Barry O'Farrell and his it, it Work Choices Light program in New South Wales. Well, I mean, the, the Coalition's policy with respect to, to industrial relations is simply Work Choices. They, they remain, remain yeah. architects, you, apostles you, you, and devotees on it. If, that's, if that's, I could, that's, the, that's the situation. If I could just they, intervene, they, they, if I could just intervene in in for a moment, sorry, Shane, to put a question to both of you. Alan, you raised the question of confidence. Isn't it the case that statements from federal politicians on both sides, from the government uh, warning about potential aftershocks of the global economy and from the opposition warning about the potential costs of the carbon tax, could both be having an effect on confidence. First to you, Alan. Um, certainly the position of the Treasurer is, and, and the statements made by the Treasurer are very important in terms of um, uh, giving confidence to the broader community. And, and I reflect back on Treasurer Peter Costello and people thought, here's a person who's in charge of the economy and they trusted him and they thought they were on the right track. In relation to things like uh, certain policies which are coming up in front of us, I mean, it, it's, it's not us that are making up these figures. I mean, the government's own figures in their own tables, their own modelling, are saying that it's going to cost jobs and it's going to put prices up. I mean, we're just, we're just, in some respects, repeating what the government's own figures and own policies are saying, or repeating what state treasury figures are saying. Shane, uh, could I put that question to you, that, that the question of confidence might be coming down to the messages from both sides of politics? Well, I'll tell you what I think you should do, and look at what Tony Abbott says when he's overseas about the Australian economy. That's when he's telling the gospel truth about the Australian economy. When he lauds uh, the Australian economy and says how well we're doing vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world. Um, what he says in Parliament is simply to say no to every good initiative. I mean, Alan's talking about supporting business. I mean, why are the Coalition opposing our assistance to small business, a $6,500 write-off to small business on assets? Why are they opposing so many of the measures in terms of infrastructure which will assist business to get on off the ground? Why are they opposing our jobs and skills type package? Why do they oppose the flood levy that help Queensland and Victoria recover? That they are opposing, they're not, they're not establishing and not supporting the the economic structures and conditions which would support Australian employment. I was an employer for 20 years before I was, in, before I was elected. I know how important small business is. Five million Australians are employed in small business. We support small business. We're the ones who are the supporters of small business. The coalition right. talks the talk but 
never walks the walk. We'll, move, we'll, we'll, move, we'll move on now, gentlemen, to the question of defence. Yesterday, the Defence Minister, Stephen Smith, released a summary of the Kirkham inquiry into the events surrounding the so-called Skype sex scandal at the Australian oh. Defence Force Academy. The Minister is, is refusing to apologise to the ad for Commandant, Bruce Kafer, who's been reinstated. Here's what he's had to say today. Well, it's not a matter of me having confidence in him. It's not my decision. It's a decision of the Chief of the Defence Force. He and the Vice Chief, his commanding officers, have made a decision. I think there should be an apology to Commandant Kafer. It should be immediate. It should be unreserved. It should be unqualified. It should be made by Minister Smith now. And if Minister Smith lacks the decency and the humility to do it, the Prime Minister should do it. Alan, why, why should the Minister apologise? The Kirkham Inquiry found the Commandant didn't err in judgement, but says it could well have been a reasonable course of action not to commence and conclude the disciplinary proceedings that Stephen Smith had a problem with. Uh, basically, the inquiry, which is an independent inquiry, completely um, exonerated the, the Commandant for um, the actions which he took. Now, uh, Minister Smith went out very strongly almost 12 months ago now and very harshly criticised the Commandant for his actions without having the full material in front of him. He had to take 12 months um, leave of absence from his position. And now, Stephen Smith was given this report on the 13th of December. He's been sitting on it for three months. And the report itself, which he won't release publicly, completely exonerates the Commandant. Well, well so what, was wrong with, right. what, what was wrong with Stephen Smith's position that to subject the female officer cadet to these disciplinary proceedings could have called her character into question? Well, I don't think the report actually said that. The report didn't say that in terms of the independent inquiry from the, from the QC who did that. The QC found that, it's, that it was a reasonable uh, position that the Commandant took. That's what he found. And Minister Smith strongly criticised uh, the Commandant um, for saying those things and forced him out of office for 12 months. I mean, that's why he owes him an apology, because the independent inquiry said that the Commandant actually took a reasonable course of action. And if we have an independent inquiry, then we should stand up and listen to what that independent inquiry actually said. Shane, the, Stephen Smith says it's not up to him to express confidence in the ad for Commandant, but doesn't his refusal to express confidence indicate that he doesn't have confidence in him? No, it's up to the uh, Chief of Defence, David Hurley, in relation to this, and the Vice Chief, and I agree with Stephen Smith. I mean, his assessment, it was, he's had the right call back then, he had the right call now on the issue of, of this issue. I mean, I used to practice as a lawyer and, and practice in criminal law. To actually allow these disciplinary proceedings to go on in circumstances where an, a potentially alleged victim of a sexual abuse uh, uh, conduct uh, could actually find herself having her character and integrity impugned um, was just awful uh, for her and I'm sure awful for all those involved. So Stephen Smith got the, got the call right 12 months ago and he got the call right now. Your interpretation of the findings, your interpretations of the findings, Lyndall, is far more accurate about what actually happened and what actually was factually found this, than Alan's, uh, Alan, Alan's and, spin and in and relation to this issue. I'm very sorry. That's why we'll have to leave it, gentlemen. Shane Newman and Alan Tudge, thank you very much for your time today. Th th thanks, Linda. Pleasure, thanks, Linda. And thank you for joining Capitol Hill today. Please join us at the same time tomorrow.